Hello and welcome! Today a little painting tutorial for all you epic fans, and not only epic fans. We're going to paint these things, or rather things in this style. These are some gas or liquid storage containers in uh, the grim dark aesthetics I would say. What we're going what we're aiming for is what we're going for, what we're aiming for is some heavily used, dirtied up, damaged, but not broken, just well used terrain. As you can see I have already three containers painted up and re quite ready to go. Uh, the, they're the same colors but the color shift on this camera is quite strange. Excuse the mess and the high contrast but we're going to go with the procedure now. I've started off by covering this again in a black primer just to show you guys the entirety of the process. I'm not going to show you how I'm painting stuff because it's it's too hard for me at the moment with my setup, but I'll stop in, in between stages. So right now, just a pure black primer, starting off. So I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see this, but this is a mixture of black and white, a very dark gray. I'll try to show you. Something like this. Yeah, my mask is currently on my face, so forgive the, forgive me, but yeah. So this is stage one. Now I'm gonna replace the paint that's in the airbrush entirely for pure white. And we're going to follow up with, uh, with uh, a partial zenithal. Okay, almost final airbrush step. Uh, it's not really a zenithal, what it is a portion of white added. The thing that's most interesting... Uh, yeah, dirty brush just for airbrush cleaning. I'm not painting with these. Just to mention is that you don't want to go smooth all the way. You want to have places where it's darker and preferably more of those places and places where it's lighter. Like here on the very top or, and over here is almost pure white, right? But the rest should be grayish, darkish. Sorry for losing focus. Yeah, grayish, darkish, like uh, bright, dark, bright, bright, and dark all, all the way around down here. Okay, now we're going to apply some filters, aka contrast paints via the airbrush. And there we have it, this is Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint. You don't want to go super smooth, you want to go through all of the, the, all of the model, the black parts and the white parts. You want to cover it in a smooth consistency, but you want to leave the darker places dark, and you want to have the lighter places red, which means that you'll probably have to do a two or maybe three gentle passes along the way so that everything is red and not pink. Unless of course you want you want it to be the dark reddish that I've showed. If you want it more pinkish then by all means you can try that out. I haven't tested it since I'm not really a pink building fan but hey up to you. The next step is fairly simple. You're gonna take a brush. You don't want to take the best brush. You want to take a used and damaged brush. The size, it depends. I'm gonna test a few. Uh, you put on some sharp de bone, dry it, and start dabbing, start stippling, and do it consistently. If you have too much paint, just wear it off a bit on the paper towel and continue on. The process isn't really complicated, but you want to take things slow. Take your time, don't use too much paint at a single run. Don't use a too big brush, but also don't hurt yourself by using a too small one. Just take your time, finish it until you have results that are fitting for you. You don't want to have a full coverage. You want to see the color below pop through just a little bit. And as you can see, this is the end result. 
it looks pretty good so far. We'll take it a few steps but more to make it even better. This took me two or three coats and I think I also did an additional one. Not through the entirety but through the things that I wanted to be the most, the least damage, the most paint keeping, let's call it that way, uh, off camera. And before I start pulling you into viewing how I painted the other two elements, let's jump to the next step. Which is going to be adding some bronze elements to the red and white composition that we currently have going on. As you can see by the perfect camera angle, you can barely see anything, but I'm adding them to some small bits and bobs in the top of the, of the screen. The next step is going to be pretty easy, as I think all of the steps currently. We're going to take some iron breaker and we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing. So as usual, take some paint, brush most of it off on a paper towel and apply sparingly in only small places. You don't want to go through all of, all of the model, definitely not. You just want to highlight some edges to show that it's silver so that beneath that red paint job you have metal which is due to paint corrosion or paint damage which is showing off so what you're going to see in on the screen at the moment is in my opinion too much this is an example of how not to do it you need to go sparingly you need to take less the almost final step is similar to the white you just take some black a little bit of black as you can see, I took way, way, way too much. And then you just want to do a single dabs along, along the way as you see fit. If you add more, then it's going to look more damaged. If less, then it's going to look das less damaged. You really don't want to overdo it since it's a enhancement, an aesthetic enhancement rather than base coverage. But yeah, that's going to that's gonna make the, the final pop. It's not going to be the final step. The final steps should be oil washes, but they're just going to be pin washing. So if you don't want them, you don't like them, you can skip them and just leave it as is now. And that's how the entirety of the project looks like after being painted and done. I have to say that I actually really enjoy the view. Pretty nice, pretty quick. Hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. See you guys later in the next video or tutorial.